I have made a couple of films to show the architectural tools in TurboCAD Professional Platinum. Now I've made two because of the variations in the, the tools. So one I've based on this old Victorian building and it, I presume this is a single skin building. I've put bricks on the walls, tiles on the roof. On the second film I've used cavity walls. I'm using colours on the walls rather than materials and I've put the thing on a slope as well. So hopefully between the two tutorials you will go through, you'll be able to pick up how to use the majority of the architectural tools. Both tutorials are divided up into six parts and there are six films for each, uh, each tutorial. And there's a PDF that goes with the tutorials and each of the PDFs are divided up into six stages or six sections. And all these are available on paulthecad.com. Following this, immediately following this, will be an example of one of the tutorials. It will be the first tutorial of the Victorian building tutorials. This is the first of a pair of tutorials which will go through most of the architectural tools in TurboCAD Professional Platinum. It won't go through all of them. I'm not going to look into stairs, but it'll go through most of them. Normally I make my drawings, I go from scratch, but for these exercises I'm going to use the architectural template. So to start I'll go File, New, New from Template, Architectural White, OK. When we go from a template we get some presets. And in the Design Director we've got a few, a lot of uh, layers here it's going to presume I suppose we're going to use. Now we can tidy this up because I can take certain ones out of here that I don't want. I don't like having things on the screen that I'm never going to use. So in this exercise I'm not going to use dimensions so I'm going to take that out. We can always put it back in again if we want to put dimensions on. Stairs and railings I'm not going to want. Schedule I don't want. Terrain no. Construction I don't want, but if I click onto it, I don't get the option to throw it away. So I can click onto it, keep my finger down and drag it down out the way. So constraints and constructions, which I'm not going to use, are out the way. And I've just got the ones here I'm going to use. Up the top, I've put my standard views. Underneath, I've got my copying tools. And then all the way along here are all the architectural tools. Now, because <clears throat> the um, building based on this old Victorian building, um, is a rectangular shape. The quickest way to do it would simply be to draw a rectangle and then turn it into, uh, turn the rectangle into a wall. So I pick a rectangle tool, I draw a rectangle, I go tab, it's 12 meters by tab, five meters. I've got no use for the grid here. I don't think I'm going to use it. So I'm going to do Alt G turns the grid off. Now, because this is uh, now I need to tell it the thickness of my walls. So I'm going to this rectangle. I want to convert to a wall. So see, there's a box here. It says convert to wall. I select that. I come out of here. I right click. I go to properties wall. Drawing an old Victorian building, the bricks would probably have been four and a half inches thick. It would probably been a two skin, no cavity, so nine inches thick. That's about 230 millimetres. I'm talking millimetres here, but in the PDF that comes with this, it talks in inches as well. The height of the wall, I'm guessing, is going to be three metres. I'm measuring from the outside. And so I want my reference point to be on the right hand side. Say OK. I click onto the wall and I click onto finish. As I start, if we look at it in 3D, we can see there's my outside of the building. Next for a roof. So here's our roof tools. 
first one is just called roof. So in this one, if I want to put a roof on a building, I would make the top of the walls my work plane, and then I would go around the edges and snap to each part. However, as it's very straightforward here, there's no fancy work anywhere to do. It's I just want the roof on top of that. This is the quickest way to do it. Add roof, add roof by walls. Select one wall, put your finger on shift, select the other three. Hit the finish flag either by right click and finishing or down the bottom. There's my roof. And we can change all sorts of things with it as we go along. But at the beginning, first of all, I want to produce, I want this to be gable ends, both ends. So I need to change the angle of this slope. So uh, this one here, edit slope angle. Let's look at it in plan view. Click onto the base of the slope you want to edit. It goes red, tab into the bottom box, type in 90, hit return. Do the same for the other end, tab 90, hit return. Hit the space bar, let's have a look at it in. Isometric, that's fine. <clears throat> if we want to uh, look at it in hidden line, Visual styles, hidden line, that was what we got. <clears throat> so first thing, we can make the thickness of this roof thicker if we want. So if we select that roof and right click and go to properties, roofs, it says roof thickness is 40. We can make it 100 if we want, make it look a bit chunkier. But what we want is this wall to go up to the roof. So that is the next one along roof wall modifier select the wall select the roof is going to wall roof is going to next job is to put i'm going to put three windows in here here's my window icon right click properties window main. Now for these three windows I'm going to just put the, the uh, default style window in and all I'm going to be concerned with is getting the right sizes. So I'm going to get the right outside size for the window and position them in the right place. Later after that when they're in place then I'll change the style of them. So the width of the window uh, all three windows is 750. The height of the window is, uh, I think it's 1,300. One, uh, 1, the head height of the windows is 2,000, 2 meters. So all I've changed for the moment, say OK. Now, best or easiest to position them in plan form. It's easier to see whether you've, you've got them in the right place. Let's turn off the visibility of the roof. And there's my window. Now, we can see these measurements here, and they're telling us how far it is in from the outside edge. Now, I've done a bit of paper measuring and found out that <clears throat> to get them all in the same, uh, get the three spaced out, They've got to be 687.7 millimeters from the end. So I can tab into these boxes down the bottom left where it says offset one. I'm going to do 687.7. Hit the return. And then I'm going to go up here because I've still got the tool and do the same, put the same measurement in offset two. So 687.7. Hit return. I'm going to go right click and cancel because I've finished. I can only see one there for some reason. Now, why could that be? So if I go view, visual styles, wireframe, well, there it is. They're all there. Now, for the one in the middle, there's a quicker, easier way of dealing with this one. I can. I don't have to do, deal with measurements because I know it's going to be right in the middle. So I can snap to the midpoint. So I can select the window, click on here, make copy, 
select the window. So click onto the origin, take your finger off the uh, <coughs> mouse, move it up there to the midpoint, roughly. Hit M. Oh, got to be on the line. M. There you go. Hit the space bar, click to deselect. Let's have a look in. Isometric. Here we go. Windows are in place. Now, the next thing we could do is we could put a circular window <clears throat> above on that gable end. So what we need to do now is to get into styles of windows. So let's go to um, Tools, Palettes, Style Manager. Here's our Style Manager. And if we click on, so this will be closed normally when you open it. So it says Window Styles. Click on to here and open it. Click on to Standard. There's a standard. We've got a preview down the bottom, and that's what we've got in our drawing. We've got the standard one. Now, what we can do is create our own styles. So while this is selected here, see there's a little icon here. It says Create New Style. If I click onto that, this box automatically comes up. And I'll call these end window. End window. OK. And now down here, let's move this up a little bit. Down here in the dimensions, I've already given dimensions, but in this dimension box, I'll just click onto this box here, auto adjust the width of the wall. So I click onto that. These frame widths and things you can mess about with, but I'm not going to spend time here doing that. That's for you, you to do in your time. Let's close that. Design, window type. It says it's an awning. So we could have a, I think we'll have a, should we have a picture? I want it to be a picture window because I don't want anything in the middle. And window shape, I can take, I'm going to make them arch. Uh, I think that'll do for now. Picture. Actually, no, I can change this to horizontal pivot or vertical pivot. Let's do a horizontal pivot. <clears throat> that means we can make them look like they're open. It'll be a bit better. But you can go up and down those, and as you change them, you can, you get the profile here. So I've created one called End Window, and I've changed a few things for it. So I select where it says end window. So that's highlighted. And then up here, there's an icon. It says apply style changes. I go, I select that. And nothing's changed in the drawing here. But I've now created a style called end window. And that's the style. There I can select my three windows. And I'll select them all at the same time. I can go right click properties now properties general you see here window styles awning transform that was the one that was the default one but now the one I've created the end window there it is it's in this list so if I click onto that now and then say okay it'll change them to my new one in the next window I make I'll make the, the style first and then place it so whether you use the standard and put it in position and then change it or create your style first then put it in it's up to you now I'm going to I want a circular window at the top here so up here create new style um, what should I call this I'll just call this end round window okay and now in the dimensions again I'll make sure it's auto adjust to width that's all already on window type I'll have picture window shape I'll have round and there it is it's not actually round but that's because the sizes are not right dimensions we won't change the sizes there we we'll change it somewhere else so round end window, I select, I go up here, I 
apply style changes. Yep. I can then put my window in here. So I'm going to right click. Oops, sorry. I'm going to choose the window. I'm going to right click, go to properties, main window. Now here I'm going to make this one. I think I'm going to make it a meter round. So tab there, tab there. Okay. Uh, right click, properties, uh, Mr. Beat there. I should have gone out to general here, end round window. There it is. Okay. There it is. Jump into all the wrong places. So if I look at it in plan view, I can then make sure it's going to the right place. And again, I can use an M snap here to be in the right place now the only thing i haven't done is i think chances are it's going to be the wrong height so let's have a look at it in plan view there it is so what i forgot to do was give it a height so if i select the window right click properties window main head height was at 1700 so i forgot to change that from the last one so if I make this now, say, 2,500. Clearly not enough. Right click, properties. Make that 3,500. So I was forgetting about the gable. Okay. And probably a bit more again. Properties. Uh, let's make that 3,000. Well, let's make that 4,000. That's perfect. Okay, so you can go in and change any of these at any time and simply update what you have. It's order of turn. Okay, so I am going to end this part of the tutorial now because although because uh, I think there's quite a lot there to take in and to bounce backwards and forwards and play around with it and get your head around how all that works how that bounces between the two so I'm going to end this one next now and the next one we're going to put the a row of doors and windows along here